You asshole! Restart to repair drive errors? Oh boy, I, I don't know, man. This is, this is gonna be interesting to find out. Hey guys, how are you all doing? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Crazy Ken, and today we're gonna be running Windows 10 virtually on this Apple Silicon MacBook Air. Specifically, we're gonna be using Windows 10 on ARM because, well, Apple Silicon is ARM-based. These Macs aren't Intel machines, so traditional x86-64 versions of Windows will not install. And Windows 10 on ARM is not a retail product, at least not right now, so we can't just take that off the shelf and throw it on a Mac. So we need to think of some other creative ways to accomplish this. So today we're gonna to use the ACVM launcher, which will enable virtualization for ARM64 inside of QEMU or QMU, whichever part of the universe you're from. And I wanna give a special thanks to all who have contributed to this software project, especially Alex Graff. You guys are amazing, you guys are geniuses. Keep doing what you're doing. Before we continue, I do wanna address one thing because I've received questions about it and people have been asking about actually installing Windows 10 natively on an Apple Silicon Mac. And Apple commented on this, and on a technical level, yes, these Macs can run Windows 10 on ARM natively, but Microsoft's gonna have to make that decision to release it to other devices or to retail. So we're not sure what's gonna happen yet. That could be in the future. We'll just have to keep our eyes peeled. All right, let's jump in and have some fun. Okay, so this is definitely not gonna be as quick as I thought. The download from the Windows Insider Preview website is taking for freaking ever. Well, while that's taking its sweet time, why don't I show you what happens when you try to run the Boot Camp Assistant and install Windows on an Apple Silicon Mac anyway. So if you try to open it, it's just gonna say, Boot Camp Assistant cannot be used. This Mac does not support Boot Camp. Right. So I thought it would be interesting, hey, what if you go into the info panel and open using Rosetta, which, lets Intel applications run. So I thought, all right, well, let, well let's try it. So now it, it doesn't give us the error, which is pretty cool. It's kind of cool that it actually works. And it looks like you can still get to the Windows support software menu. So I guess you could still download that stuff from here. I haven't tried it. But uh, when you actually continue, it just says Bootcamp Assistant has encountered a problem. An internal error has occurred. So you get a little bit further, but that's it. Okay, so the file finally finished downloading. We have it right here. It's a VHDX and here is ACVM. So let's go ahead and open this guy up. And all right, looks pretty simple. Looks like we just drag this into the main image well and start her up. Probably hide that thing there. And there we go. Ah, Tiano Core, open platform firmware development. It's a good start so far. So while this is starting up, I just wanted to thank my buddy Martin Noble for inspiring me to look into this as well. And I also found another cool video by Andrew Sai, I think is how to pronounce his name. Sorry if I'm butchering that. He has a nice tutorial that shows you how to put the stuff together pretty easily. And I'm actually following that along with another guide step-by-step step as we go here. So definitely check him out if you need some help and check out Martin's stuff as well. He does some cool little software mods as well, like changing the startup sounds on Macs. It's some funny stuff. All right, looks like we're going into Windows setup here. I'm gonna bring my dock back up just because I think it's pretty. And there we go, is this the right region? Heh, well, it actually is, United States. That's a pretty cool place. We're gonna say yes to that. Yep, we'll do that keyboard layout. Don't need to add any more, we'll say skip. Uh, yes, I expected this would happen. So there's no driver to connect to any, any type of like internet communication. So we'll have to fix that later. We'll take a look at that. That shouldn't be too hard, I hope. And uh, we'll skip it and yeah, well, we can't connect. So we're just gonna say continue with limited setup. Windows 10 license agreement. We could read the whole thing and I just did. I'm a speed reader. Crazy Ken, that's who's using this PC. Create a memorable password. No. <laughs> and um, yeah, we'll just leave all this stuff on. I mean, this isn't really a serious system. This is how I think we're okay with that. Um, no, I don't really use Cortana. I don't use Siri either. Hi, well, hey, Windows, how's it going? H how does it feel to be on an Apple Silicon computer? We're getting everything ready for you. Well, that's just great. All right, almost there. And here we go, hey, it's working. Windows 10 on ARM is running on Apple Silicon inside of 
QEMU. Look at that. So, yeah, let's just have a quick look here, performance-wise. I can already see it's lagging a little bit. We're probably not gonna get the fastest performance right now. I mean, as you could probably imagine, this is like duct taped together right now. But the fact that this is working is incredible, even though performance may not be that great. And yeah, we're probably not gonna be able to get any higher screen resolutions or any kind of graphics acceleration, but this is a good start. Now, internet access, yes, I'm pretty sure broken heart. We are not connected. So we're going to have to figure that out. Let me just uh, do a quick uh, look up on the GitHub thing. Okay, so it looks like I just need to install the Vert IO driver from this ISO. So we just got to probably going to have to shut this baby down. I'm sure there's some people screaming right now like, ah, you can do it this other way, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I'm doing it the way I think I know will work. <laughs> this is Crazy Against Tech Misadventures. Sometimes sh breaks. So I'm guessing we just drag it into here and um, it'll mount in the D drive. So we'll start that up in the Explorer here. We should have the D drive. There we go, looks good. And just to make sure we do this right, I'm pulling up the manual on the side here on my sexy new iPad Air. We need to enable test sign device drivers, that's right. So let's do that in our good old friend, the command prompt. Test signing on, uh, could not be opened. Oh, duh, I gotta run as admin. Go to the command prompt, run as administrator. There we go. That's the nice sound I wanna hear. <laughs> All right, so we'll go back and do the bcd edit, dash set, test signing on, boom, there we go. And we will reboot this sucker. Now we actually need to install the thing. Piss off. <laughs> All right, let's go to our, yeah, man, even the mouse cursor's lagging a little bit. Let's go to our good old friend, the device manager. Let's sort by connection, and we'll update the driver for this guy. Okay, we'll point it to the D drive here, net to KVM, Windows 10, and we're on an ARM-based machine, so ARM64, and we'll hit next, and there we go. Vert IO Ethernet adapter by Red Hat, good old Red Hat, we'll install that, and bam, there we go. We are now on the web, and look, it's our updated website, which actually can work with mobile layouts, which it may not even switch to a desktop layout because the resolution is so low in this poor thing. But hey, it, uh, it's actually responsive now. I finally updated it, and it's SSL. So yay, okay. So what can we do? What, what do I always do during installation sensations? Well, we put one of my wallpapers on the system. You can download these too, they're free, just thecomputerclan.com slash wallpapers. Let's see, I like this grass one. Let's go ahead and do that. Enjoy that speed. All right, and we will save this to the downloads. Make sure we're done with all this stuff. And then there we go, boom, we got our own wallpaper on Windows 10 on ARM. I'm not a super big fan of benchmarks. They're kind of fun to get some relative ideas on performance, but it's not real world stuff. The real world performance is what's gonna make a huge difference. So. I'm not all for numbers on paper, but because a lot of people were talking about <laughs> the numbers that this was scoring, I want to try it out for myself and see what numbers I get. Because apparently people were comparing Geekbench numbers on a Surface Pro X versus this QEMU virtualized version of Windows 10 on an Apple Silicon MacBook Air, and the MacBook Air numbers were way freaking higher. So let's find out. This is probably not really a fair comparison. I really don't know how this stuff works under the hood, but we are gonna do it anyway. So I'm looking up the numbers on my iPad here. There was a Geekbench run on December 5th with a Microsoft Surface Pro 10, 740 single core, 2794 multi-core. And in here we got 1453 for both. And I, I, I'm guessing it's only using like a one core configuration right now. That's why the numbers are the same. I'm actually not sure. I've seen some other people run this benchmark and they got higher numbers than me, but I um, I don't, I didn't change any of the settings. So, <laughs> but even without changing any of the settings to allocate more performance to the virtual machine, 1453 is still about double what the native Surface Pro 10 single core score is, but you know, people can freak out and say, oh, the number is so much higher, it's great, but you know, calm your titties. This is an early stage virtualization. Like the performance is really <laughs> not, not gonna be that great. Even if the number is higher, the performance is not real world ready. But again, this is like experimental first steps. This is amazing. It's cool that 
Like we can, smart people can even figure this out and then we can use this stuff and play with it. So that's pretty cool. That was fun to run. Let's take a look at maybe some built-in games here quick. Let's see what they got. Solitaire. Um, 2D animations seem to be working okay, given it's a very low, not even retina ready resolution. We're still trying to sign in, I guess. <laughs> Well, Solitaire is not working, so I'm going to try that again. And in the background, I'm going to install Steam to maybe see if we can get some kind of other game to play. We're going to need, a, like, a miracle, maybe. <laughs> uh, let's try Solitaire again. Boom! So, yeah, 2D animation looks pretty smooth. You got sound effects, too. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, okay, let's embarrass ourselves. Let's do this. And then, uh, hey, we got a six. We can do that. Let's see what we can do with maybe a little more of an intensive 3D game given the very limited resources we have here. Oh dear. So yeah, if I understand correctly, Windows 10 on ARM still supports 32-bit x86 applications, and I think they're bringing 64-bit support soon. Um, I gotta double check on that. But yeah, I mean, we were running an x86 application earlier. Solitaire, I believe, was that. That's not native on ARM. So we should be able to install a game. I'm not sure if it's gonna like run well, but it should still be able to launch. Let's go easy on it and try the original Half-Life. It's not giving me any errors so far. So maybe this will actually work-ish. Uh, let's see if the original Half-Life will work. Oh boy, I, I don't know, man. This is, this is gonna be interesting to find out. I'm actually doing a charity event for Half-Life 2, by the way. I haven't played that game in so long. I've been wanting to replay it. And every time I die, again, it's a charity event. Every time I die, I'm gonna donate $100 to charity and we'll also have the audience participating. You guys can donate as well. It's gonna be a really fun live stream charity event on December 19th. I'm super excited to try that out. Just uh, follow me on Twitter. You know, Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel so you don't miss it. It's gonna be a lot of fun and good for charity. Everybody wins. All right, let's launch it and, oh no, I saw a thing come up. No. Fatal error. Error initializing mainframe buffer. That doesn't surprise me. Um, I, I, I'm not surprised at all. I had very low hopes that it would work, but it let us install it at least. So there's something. <laughs> What about like a Click Team Fusion game, like Five Nights at Freddy's? Maybe that's less complicated, maybe that'll work. I doubt it, but why not? Let's try it. Hey! Well, FNAF 3 launched. I mean, it's definitely lagging, but it's... It's playing. <laughs> I want to see how the camera pan moves. Oh man, it's not even panning. It's supposed to pan when I... Oh, look at that frame rate. Oh. Look at that frame rate. I think if I run this game any longer, something's gonna be catching on fire. This computer. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's, it's cool that we kinda got it to work. Not too shabby. Yeah, I'm noticing other applications are not opening. Like, File Explorer will open, Edge will open. You know, I guess those are like more traditional Win32 apps, but these, be patient with me, are these called universal apps? <laughs> I... These do not want to seem to work, like even like the weather app. Like those do not want to launch. I'm not 100% sure why that happens, but hey, that's the cool thing about this community. All of you guys in the comments, like you can always help me figure stuff out. I'm sure one of you guys out there knows. So it's a bit rough right now, but this is the start of something pretty cool. I mean, Crazy Ken's Tech Misadventures has a lot to do with tinkering. Like we're all about tinkering and experimenting here, and that's what this is. It's an experiment. People are figuring out how to make this stuff work, and it's the foundation for more permanent solutions in the future. So try it for yourself, let me know what you think, and feel free to subscribe for more cool tech episodes every week. And if you haven't seen my MacBook Air speed test episode yet, that was a super fun one, so definitely check that out. And if you wanna help fund the future of the Computer Clan, plus get some awesome perks along the way, feel free to pledge to my Patreon, and thanks in advance for your support. And hey, if you like this episode, you know what to do. Thanks for sticking with me, catch the crazy, and pass it on.